Nvidia swung the hammer with its 3000 series GPUs earlier this fall, and AMD just parried. The latest high-end Radeon GPU should, according to AMD, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the latest from Team Green at extremely pervasive prices. Here's how AMD's new cards compare to all the latest gaming hardware in 2020. Now, if you're looking for a high-end card, both AMD and NVIDIA look like compelling options given the information at our fingertips. AMD has taken aim at both flagship NVIDIA cards, showing up numbers that boast impressive performance when compared to the competition. The RX 6800 XT shows very similar performance to the RTX 3080 in AMD's charts, with most games going beyond 60 frames per second at 4K Ultra settings and triple-digit frame rates for 1440p. Meanwhile, the RX 6800 claims to have an edge over the RTX 2080 Ti, meaning AMD may actually have a leg up in the high mid-range. Finally, the RX 6900 XT hits similar frame rates to the RTX 3090 in the games AMD showed off. Now, these numbers come with the Smart Access memory feature turned on, which gives a boost to systems running 5000 series Ryzen CPUs. Now, unfortunately, no ray tracing performance numbers were given. Now, performance is only part of the story, though, since AMD is often gunning for that performance per dollar metric. The 6800 XT is priced $50 cheaper than the 3080. Meanwhile, the 6900 XT is a whopping $500 less than the RTX 3090. You could buy a next-gen console with that amount of money left over. Yeah. The RX 6800 is a bit harder to pin down, though, since it's $80 more expensive than the 3070 it claims to beat. Now, the price to performance is compelling, but we'll have to wait until we get our hands on them to see how AMD's claims stack up to reality. Now, there are some less quantifiable elements at play here. For example, we need to get eyes on AMD's Fidelity FX to see how it compares to Nvidia's DLSS, which is starting to prove very effective at keeping performance up for high resolution and ray traced games. So what about the new consoles? It's clear that AMD's latest cards are more powerful than the GPUs in both the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, which use the same RDNA 2 architecture. The RX 6800, the lowest performer of this trio, has 60 compute units at 1.8 gigahertz, boosting up to 2.1 gigahertz. Now that's still more than the PS5's 36 compute units at up to 2.23 gigahertz and the Xbox Series X's 52 compute units at 1.825 gigahertz. Plus, the 6800 doesn't have to share its 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory with the rest of the system like the PS5 and the Xbox Series X will. Now, we don't know how its onboard ray tracing hardware compares either, but it's safe to say 6000 series owners will still get better performance than their console compatriots. Now, arguably more interesting is the peak this gives us at possible next iterations of these consoles. Sure, the PS5 and Xbox Series X aren't even out yet, but we can't resist looking to the future, especially given the trends we saw last generation. Now, when the original PS4 and Xbox One launched, the R9 290 series cards were AMD's new hotness on the PC side of things. Now, those cards ranged from $400 to $1,500 at the top end, and all were more powerful than the GPUs in the new consoles. Now, fast forward to 2016, when the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X came around. Now, they were were packing GPUs that seem to lie somewhere around AMD's RX 470 and 480 in performance. As fate would have it, that's in the ballpark of where that R9 290 performed a few years earlier. Now, in other words, 2013's high mid-range card trickled down to the consoles just in time for a mid-cycle refresh three years later. Now, this year's consoles are likely to stick around for a few years before we see anything new. But if Sony and Microsoft come out with similar pro style refreshes once again, we wouldn't be surprised to see them rock in performance near the RX 6800 or even better. Now, given AMD's claims that the 6800 is running some games near 4K at 120 frames per second, that's awfully exciting to look forward to, even if you aren't planning on buying one at launch. So that's all we have for you right now, but for anything you might have missed, check out the AMD Radeon Reveal event live stream, and for all other coverage, keep watching IGN.